But again, to go back to the modern board and your board, you, your board were prepared that if Walter put three plays with casts of 12 each, mm -hmm. your board was prepared to accept the risk, and if it didn't come out, and they were prepared to accept the debt yeah. and deal with that, or your board would not say, Walter, there will be no debt this season. If you have to have two people show, two person shows, you do that. Never came up. So you had a board that was not afraid of debt, that was not afraid of not enough people showing up in the theater, nope. and was not afraid of fundraising. Is that, am I surmising this right? Yes. Uh, they, they uh, fundraising came later. That, that was quite new to them. Okay. And I think it really started when we, quote, got legitimate, as it were when we got our first money from the Canada Council. You know, uh, when I started that first year with TMB, and I got a grant of $20,000 from uh, the Beaver Book Foundation. And in each of the six towns, I had service clubs that were sponsoring us, and we were getting, I think, $1,200 a night from each place. So I had my guaranteed income. Okay. And that was the model for a couple of years and till I started to realize that, hey, these clubs are making money off us. We should be getting that. So out of that, we developed the, uh, the friends of TMB in each community. And we set up a committee in each community who were the friends of TMB. And they looked after the ticket sales locally, putting up the posters, doing the phone calls for renewals on subscriptions, hosting the parties. They did it all. It became their company. They owned it. They had ownership. I do want to point out, uh, for the purpose of this conversation, that TNB, I think, is the only theatre company in Canada that actually tours, or did, did. tour its main yep. stage shows. Yep. That, that was a unique model. Absolutely um, unique. And that wasn't in any other... Uh, no. Why did you choose th that model? You perform in Fredericton yep. for a number of nights and then you take it to the centers around yeah. New Brunswick. The, there wasn't a large enough audience in Fredericton to sustain a company. Uh, I had been around the province many times when I was active with the Dominion Drama Festival. So I knew however primitive they were, there were facilities and there was hunger. Maybe they didn't know they were hungry, but there was a hunger. And so I found people in each community who had been associated with that in the old days or whatever. And that became the, uh, the basis for the whole thing. And uh, there was a hunger. I mean, one of the- And what's driving you to set that up? Is, is it because there's audiences there or is it because you know there's revenue and that will support a larger theater in a small, in a small city in a smaller province? I well, mean, if it was Toronto, would you have done a touring version of it? Well, I did a study for the Ontario Arts Council after I left the Canada Council on touring and couldn't understand why there already wasn't a couple of tour companies here that were touring all these wonderful facilities that are there. I don't understand why, you know. Uh, why should people have to drive hours and hours and hours? You know. uh, why do it? I knew we could sustain it. Because the people, when I left in 78, I mean, one forgets the transformative power of the theater. When I left in 78, I went out, I went out on virtually every tour, but I went out to say goodbye to all the people who had supported us over those 10 years. And every community was different. There was the, the parties where there was lots of booze and singing and dancing and you know, all kinds of different scenarios. Sussex was quite wonderful because the students there made the tea and the coffee and the sandwiches afterwards and they'd in the cafeteria. And so I'd sing by Gene Hodnot, wonderful teacher there. Was just, and this man came up to me, he was in his 60s, farmer, came up to me and he said, uh, I just want to say thank you. And I said, oh, very nice. He said, yes, he said, you know, one of your plays, changed my life. And I said, really? What play was that? And he said, oh, in your second season, yes. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Thank you. And, and I thought, what in the name of God was happening in that person's life at that time? That sitting on a hard chair 
in a high school auditorium watching this show changed his life. And I, I saw so many lives changed. This shy kid that we brought in to do a little small part of the university, Michael Egan, went on to become a pretty substantial <laughs> designer, you know? C. David Johnson, you know, in our young company. All these hundreds of people who came, whose lives were transformed, and, and the lives of people who saw them was transformed. That was, that's a, we at one point, we were a province of what, 400, around 400,000. We had almost 9,000 subscribers. Mm. I, mean, I did one show on that tour, Waiting for Godot, and Malcolm yeah, Black was yeah. the artistic director. And a wonderful production it was. It was. It was, was vaudeville. It, it was vaudeville. It, oh. was, it was fun. And yeah. then we went on this tour. And this was alien to me. And I thought, oh, OK, sure, OK. And oh, yes, we're playing St. Stephen's, and we're playing yeah. whatever. And then I, it kind of clicked a switch, uh, threw a switch in my head. That um, because I was thought, well, we're the theater people, and we do our theater in our theaters, and you come to us. And the switch was, you know what? We'll do our theaters in our theaters, and you come to us. And guess what? It's also our obligation, our responsibility to come to you. Yeah. And it is to involve and to have a wider sort of spread and say, I don't care what your community is. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're a big, populous, rich city, and I don't care if you're a small, vibrant community. All should have theater. And Absolutely. here was a model of doing it. Yep. So then the drive around New Brunswick going to this theater and that theater, and oh my gosh, we're in a gymnasium tonight. Yep. And oh my God, it was in St. John. It was this huge place in St. John. The it was a way high school of auditorium. discovering not only audiences in those places, but discovering a, a layer of Canada that needed to be yep. involved yep. in the theater and makes us only richer. And now, if you went now and you go to the Imperial Theater in St. John, was one of the most beautiful theaters in the country. You go to the Capitol. Yep. In Moncton, you know. Uh, I used to, uh, was your reaction was not unusual. Uh, whenever there was a new cast come in, new company come in, and I would have my chat with them, I would always say before we went out on the tour, I said, now, you must not misconstrue a seeming lack of sophistication for a lack of intelligence or insight. If you do that, it'll come around and hit you right in the back of the head because these people have seen the theater. They've seen it, you know. 